We generally hear the statement that water is life. Water is the universal solvent. Water is actually everything. Now, you know what guys, in our today's class, we will discuss about the pollution which is related to this amazing liquid or I will say the amazing universal solvent. So if I talk about the human body, our body is also made up of about 70% of water. And not just our body, what about the earth? Even the earth consists of about 60 to 70% water. And if I talk about the uses guys, they are endless. Water is used for drinking, bathing, industrial purposes, agricultural purposes, for generation of electricity. Well guys, for what not? Well actually, water is everything. But guys, do you know, every year about 3 million people die due to the waterborne diseases like typhoid or cholera. Well, you know what, at today's class, as I mentioned in the beginning, it's not about the wonders of water, but it is about the pollution of water and how important it is for us to know about the purity of water before using it for the drinking purposes and even for other purposes. And you know, it is many times happening due to the human activities. Well guys, the pollution happens through different paths, how it reaches the surface or the groundwater. Well guys, when we are able to identify the source, it is called as the point source. That means we can identify how it is getting into the water, like the municipal and the industrial discharges where the pollutants get mixed into the water. So we know the source. But guys, when we cannot identify the source, such cases, it is called as the non-point sources. For example, if I say the agricultural runoff, where how the water and the pollutants are getting mixed, we cannot identify that. Similarly, if I say acid rain or if I say water storm drainage, all of these are examples of the non-point sources and there are many more as you can see in this table. So guys, let's discuss stepwise these pollutants and how the water gets polluted because of them. And first of all, let's discuss about the pathogens. So pathogens, they are the most common disease causing agents or I will say the pollutants and these organisms are called as the pathogens. Now I think if I ask you, you can tell it very easily. The examples are nothing but the various types of bacteria, parasites and even certain organisms which are present in the animal excreta. And not just the animal excreta guys, even in the human excreta like E. coli and streptococcus, which causes the gastrointestinal diseases. All right, guys, now let's move ahead and discuss the next water pollutant, which is the organic waste. And I think you can guess it so easily. Well, guys, now the organic waste that I'm talking about are the tree leaves, grass, trash, and the most common ones which are happening because of the natural phenomena. Because how does it occur? Simply by the runoff and we cannot protect that, right? So guys, even the excess phytoplankton growth that can cause water pollution. But you know one good thing? That these wastes are biodegradable in nature. You know what guys, when this organic waste it is present in water, there are certain types of bacteria that can decompose it. As I said, it is degradable in nature. But you know what, during this course of decomposition of the organic matter, they take up the dissolved oxygen in water. And if the bacteria is taking up the oxygen which is present in water, the aquatic life is going to suffer because then the aquatic life is not going to get enough oxygen for their growth and productivity. And you know what happens many times in cold water, when there is excess of organic matter which is present in water, the bacteria will have to decompose it it is going to take up the oxygen present in it and the level of dissolved oxygen we call as do reaches around 10 ppm now you must be thinking so what's the problem you know what the normal value which is present in air is 200,000 ppm therefore guys too less oxygen for the aquatic life and therefore many times they suffer and even die well guys, now you must be thinking, why don't we use a bacteria that does not require oxygen for the breakdown? Well, that is also possible. There are certain bacteria which we call as the anaerobic bacteria which can cause the breakdown of this organic waste. But you know what? It would lead to the formation of certain harmful chemicals and a very foul smell which is harmful for us humans. So in both the cases, it is either harmful for the aquatic life or for us humans.
And you know what, guys? This chemical waste breakdown, all of this has a name. It is called as the biochemical oxygen demand. That is the amount of oxygen which is required by the bacteria to break down the organic matter for sample of the volume. It is called as BOD or the biochemical oxygen demand. And with the help of this value, we can find out how much oxygen is needed and what is the extent of pollution in the water. Like if I talk about the clean water, the value is either 5 ppm or less than that. But when the water is polluted, the value is above 17 ppm. ppm that is parts per million. Alright guys, now let's move ahead and discuss the next category that is the chemical pollutants. So there are many chemical substances which are soluble in water and which can get inside the human body or other living organisms. For example, if I talk about certain heavy metals like cadmium, nickel and mercury. Well guys, they are extremely harmful for our health because human body cannot excrete them and therefore they can even damage our kidney, liver and the central nervous system when the value is above the tolerance limit. Not just this guys, many acids like the sulfuric acid which are coming from the mine drainage and certain salts like if I talk about the salt which is used to melt the snow and the ice in very cold regions. Even they behave as chemical pollutant and they can dissolve in water. Well guys, these I am talking about the inorganic chemical substances. Now there are certain organic substances as well which are very harmful for us humans and other living organisms. For example, if I talk about the petroleum products, like many times there is the spillage or I will say the drainage of oil in the oceans. So again, very harmful for the aquatic life and even for the humans. And guys, there are many other organic substances like the pesticides that can reach to us by the spray or the runoff from the lands. And not just this, there are compounds like polychlorinated biphenyls, which we call as the PCBs, which are commonly used as a very good cleansing solvent. But again guys, it is very harmful for our health. And not just that, even they are carcinogenic in nature. And guys, even the detergents, although they are biodegradable in nature, but again behave as a chemical pollutant. And guys, now again, if I talk about these biodegradable substances, how the certain bacteria, they can decompose it, the same thing happens that we discussed in case of the organic waste. They are going to take up the oxygen which is dissolved in water and thereby it is again harmful for the aquatic life because they are not going to get the enough oxygen for themselves. And not just this guys, in case of fertilizers, they contain phosphate ions. You know, when it washes down to water, in the presence of water, the phosphate ions, they lead to an excessive growth of algae. This algae then covers the whole surface of water. And when it covers the whole surface of water, what happens? The sunlight that does not reach to the surface and the aquatic life is deprived of not just the sunlight, but also the oxygen, which was dissolved in water, is taken up by the algae. And you know, this has a name. When the aquatic life suffers this loss, or we can say when it is deprived of its nutrients, oxygen, sunlight, it is called as the loss of biodiversity and called as eutrophication. So guys, we have discussed about the different causes of pollution, the different agents and how it is affecting the living beings. Now guys, there is an internationally acclaimed standard for drinking water. You know what, that simply means that there are certain ions which are present in water and there is a specific concentration that the water should have for them. So let's discuss that and start it stepwise. And first of all, let's talk about the fluorine ion or the metal and what should be the concentration for it. So guys, if I talk about the fluoride ion, many times the soluble fluoride is added to the water to bring its concentration to about 1 ppm or 1 milligram per decimeter cube. You know why it is done? Because if there is no fluoride present in water, it can cause harmful effects like the tooth decay. But guys, if the concentration is beyond 10 ppm, then again it is very harmful for humans. Then it will lead to the decay of bones as well as the teeth. And the major effects on teeth is seen in the areas of Rajasthan where the concentration is not suitable. Alright guys, now let's take a look at the next one in the table which is the nitrate ion. 
So if I talk about the concentration, the maximum concentration which is suitable in water is 50 ppm. And if it goes beyond that, it can lead to diseases which are known as the blue baby syndrome. Well guys, it's not very relevant or I will say it is extremely important for us to memorize it and then it is going to come in the exam. But you always have to take a look at this and you should always know the causes and the reasons. Alright guys, now let's talk about lead. So if I talk about lead, it can reach to the humans because many times the lead pipes are used for transportation of water and in that way the leaching of metal can happen and it can get mixed in the water. But guys, the concentration limit which is set for lead is 50 ppb which is parts per billion and if it goes beyond that it will be extremely harmful for us and you know what it causes the damage to liver to kidneys and even the reproductive system now guys if i talk about the sulfate ion the excessive sulfate limit which is beyond 500 ppm if that is present in water it can cause laxative effects but it is harmless if it is present at the moderate levels Similarly guys, you can take a look for iron, manganese, copper, aluminium and the values which are written for them. So guys, next time when you're drinking water, it is very important that you take a look at the concentration of all these metals or ions so that you should know whether the water which you're drinking is safe for you and your family or not. So guys, this was all for today's class. Let's summarize what we have done in this class. Water pollution can be caused by two types of sources, namely point source and non-point sources. The point sources are the ones which are easily identified sources of pollution, for example, municipal and industrial discharge pipes. The non-point sources are those where a source of pollution cannot be easily identified, for example, agricultural runoff, acid rain and storm water drainage. Pathogens. They are considered to be the most serious water pollutants and are the disease-causing agents. Pathogens include bacteria, parasite and even present in the animal excreta. Organic waste. The organic matter such as leaves, grass, trash, they pollute water in the simplest way as a consequence of runoff. Even the excessive phytoplankton growth within the water can cause water pollution. These wastes are biodegradable in nature, but due to the large population of bacteria which decomposes the organic matter present in water, it consumes the oxygen dissolved in water and thereby depriving the aquatic life of the water and the oxygen which is needed for their growth. The amount of oxygen required by bacteria to break down the organic matter present in certain volume of sample of water is called biochemical oxygen demand. Clean water would have BOD value less than 5 ppm, whereas highly polluted water could have a value of 17 ppm or more. Chemical Pollutants There are many water-soluble inorganic chemicals such as the heavy metals like cadmium, mercury, nickel, which constitute an important class of pollutants. The organic chemicals are another group of substances which are found in polluted water. Generally, the petroleum products, major oil spills, and other organic substances like PCBs are present in water. The process in which nutrient-enriched water bodies support a dense plant population, which kills animal life by depriving it of oxygen and results in subsequent loss of biodiversity is known as eutrophication. The concentration of fluoride ion should be 1 ppm which is good for drinking water. When it exceeds beyond 10 ppm, it causes harmful effects to bones and teeth. The maximum limit for nitrate in drinking water is 50 ppm. The maximum limit prescribed for lead in the drinking water is about 50 ppb. Beyond that, it can damage kidney, liver and the reproductive system. The concentration of sulfate ions which is considered suitable is less than 500 ppm. The concentration of iron should be 0.2 ppm, manganese 0.05 ppm, aluminium 0.2 ppm, copper 3 ppm, zinc 5 ppm and cadmium is 0.05 ppm.